Hello and welcome to The Nursing Show. I'm your guest host, Rick Rosati. Thanks for joining us here at the Public Health Emergency Preparedness Summit 2013 from Atlanta, Georgia. We're very proud to be here to help strengthen public health and healthcare preparedness through innovation, integration, and implementation. We've been joined all weekend by professionals in the public health area and speakers here at the conference, subject matter experts that are gonna share their information and guidance with us. My guest today on the topic of hospital evacuations is Dr. Eric Toner from the Centers for Biosecurity at UPMC. Doctor, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my background is emergency medicine. I practiced emergency medicine for 25 years before joining the Center for Biosecurity. And most of my work now relates to hospital preparedness for pandemic flu, but all hazards really. So um, hospital evacuations is an area that's become an interest of ours in recent years because we've finally seen some success in evacuations. And that's what you're here talking about at the summit, right? Yes, we organized a panel on what Hurricane Sandy has taught us about hospital evacuations uh, because we saw so, so much success in New York City with the evacuations. Now, when we talk about success or failure in the realm of hospital evacuation, it all starts with planning. What are some of the key concepts that someone should be looking to implement when it comes to planning for a hospital evacuation? Well, you know, when I first started thinking about hospital evacuation a couple decades ago, um, I thought it was impossible. I thought, there's no way you can evacuate a hospital. How are you going to get the ICU patients, the bariatric patients, down, down the, the stairs when the elevators are out? Where are you going to send them? And, um, but now we're seeing that, that over time, this has become a, a real possibility. So the first thing I would say to planners is, you can really do it, and you can do it with relative safety. and. Whereas a couple of years ago, we were saying it's always better to shelter than evacuate. And I would still say my tendency is to lean in that direction. I'm thinking more and more that, that evacuation is a viable option as long as you've planned adequately, as long as you really thought out in, in great detail what, what you need to do. And planning for that should include your neighboring hospitals or other facilities that will be receiving patients from you, yes? Absolutely. It, it makes. It's, it's no good to evacuate your hospital if you have no place to send the patients. And, and so you need to work out those relationships, establish those memoranda of, of uh, understanding with the other facilities. Uh, work with your local healthcare coalition, work with your health department, work with your Office of Emergency Management. Know how this would go, exercise it. It's not just planning, it's, it's no good if you don't exercise it. And, and, because you need the exercises to figure out those small details which are the critical elements. Right, and, and we're hearing more and more uh, talk about how we, we put together an emergency plan, in this case a hospital evacuation plan, and then we train on it, and then we you know move up that exercise design process, we exercise on it and we refine that plan. That's an incredibly important exactly. piece, would you agree? The cycle of emergency management, yes, yeah. yes. Now, can you comment a little bit about the, the time frame when we should be thinking about evacuating our hospitals? We, we have, let's say, an impending event, a natural event is on the way, it's forecasted. Uh, certainly, we want to evacuate that facility as safely and efficiently as possible, but we want to do that before we lose power. Yeah, well, this is a, um, obviously, you want to do it well in advance. You, you want to be able to evacuate your hospital a week in advance of, of the event, but rarely do we have that kind of notice. Um, you know, with a hurricane, you may have 72 hours notice, uh, maybe a little bit more. So the, the first moment that you have the warning that something like a hurricane is coming, you ought to be thinking through your plans, thinking through your logistics, creating a timeline. And this is you know, one of the lessons from the story of, of New York City, is they really did, the Office of Emergency Management had a timeline. They, they broke down all the steps that were necessary and when they needed to be accomplished. Uh, and you need to um, get your, your leaders, your jurisdictional leaders, your elected officials involved so they know they're going to have to make the call at this point. And it may be 48 hours in advance of the storm, and it may be a beautiful sunny day, 
but they may be having to make a, a call that is a very serious call. It's going to cost millions of dollars and could conceivably put people's lives in danger. Evacuating very sick people from a hospital is not inconsequential. inconsequential. Even on a nice sunny <coughs> 70 degree day, we're going to evacuate our facility ahead of a, an impending event. We still have to muster those resources to transport appropriately, transport patients from uh, the, the affected facility to another facility. We're really putting people in harm's way simply by the virtue of moving them from their ICU or yes. what have you, not to be taken lightly. Yes, exactly so, exactly so. Now, when we look to natural disasters like Hurricane Sandy, what did this storm or other natural disasters that you've studied, what did they teach us? So, um, one thing we've learned from recent natural disasters is that in addition to the fact that you can actually do an evacuation with relative safety, is that to stay or to go is not an all or nothing uh, decision. You should be deciding to stay, if, if that's your decision, you should also be deciding at the same time to prepare for that possible evacuation. And we saw in New York City that two of the hospitals that planned to stay in place, that planned to shelter uh, Bellevue and NYU, eventually had to evacuate. And by doing things that facilitated the evacuation, by moving the bariatric patients down, by moving ICU patients to lower floors, um, it made the evacuation much easier and much safer for the patients. So it's not all or nothing. There's a big gray, and the gray is important. So what I'm hearing then is a, a robust planning and uh, exercise program surrounding hospital evacuation is a must, followed up by good decision making or good pre-planned trigger points, uh, yes. if then kind of approach. We're Absolutely. gonna start moving patients while, while we're sheltering in place, all the while keeping in the back of our head that we might have to upgrade and evacuate. Yes, exactly. So that line of thought kind of serves us well. And, and that would that be then the, the lesson coming out of natural disasters that we would take forward? Yes, I, I think so. That Great. Um, now, looking at all the hospital evacuations uh, that have taken place that we've looked at, um, what are some of the commonalities among the successful operations? I think they really relate uh, to, a large, to a large extent around relationships between institutions, I mean, between institutions and agencies. So I think the successful uh, evacuations have involved a good relationship between the hospitals being evacuated and the receiving hospitals and between the hospital that's being evacuated and the emergency management agency, the EMS agency, um, even the federal government and state government and, and public health. It's when all these entities work together in, in a health care coalition, we see that this works well. Now the opposite of that then is what do you see as our major areas for improvement surrounding hospital evacuations? Um, I think it really relates to, um, as, we, as we talked about before, well, first of all, it involves being part of a coalition. So if you're not part of a coalition, you need to be part of a coalition. And in that context, you need to be planning and you need to be exercising. And evacuation exercises are really hard to do. They're time consuming and expensive. They involve multiple agencies, and so many hospitals are reluctant to do them. A tabletop exercise won't do the trick. You really have to move some patients. Now, maybe you don't have to move your sickest ICU patients sure. in an exercise, but you need to simulate that. You need to figure out how you're gonna move somebody who's on a vent and on four monitors and needs four healthcare providers at their bedside. How are you gonna move that person down eight flights of stairs? Fantastic. Well, Dr. Toner, thank you very much for joining us here on The Nursing Show. I think this is a good place for us to wrap up our discussion on hospital evacuations. I do appreciate your time being here and certainly appreciate the good folks at NHO for sponsoring this podcast studio here at the Prepare, uh, Emergency Preparedness Summit and Healthcare Preparedness Summit 2013 in Atlanta, Georgia. We are proud to be here to help strengthen public health, and healthcare response by innovation, integration, and implementation. I'm Rick Rosati. This has been The Nursing Show. Thank you for joining us.